In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, this morning's Gospel reading is a parable which most of us probably know quite well uh, of the prodigal son. Uh, this is a young man who certainly, as uh, to, to kind of flip St. Paul's words around, uh, <clears throat> thought that his, you know, that he was made really for his hunger, right, for his belly. Uh, rather than the other way around. And he let that desire consume him. The desires of his flesh, of his, uh, of his stomach, of his uh, desires of lust, everything, as he went and he squandered his father's inheritance long before his father had died. Squandered it, uh, as it says, in loose living. This morning, uh, rather than maybe meditate on the older son who we often think about, uh, as he didn't receive his brother back so lovingly, uh, or even on the father's great love and compassion, although that's certainly central to the story, and we'll touch on that as well. Uh, I'm going to think and reflect a little bit on some words, and really some thoughts that, I, uh, that uh, the late father Thomas Hopko reflected on, uh, as he said in one of his reflections on this gospel, what if? What if that younger son hadn't returned home? What if that younger son had stayed in his squalor, had gotten stuck in that rut, and rather than remembering what he had lost, or what he had left, rather, what if he stayed in that pigsty? And what if he stayed there and lived there, had his family there and children there, and they had family and children there. Can you only imagine what it must have, or what it might have been like for them? How they would have, although I'm sure heard stories as they were growing up, forgotten what that son had left behind. And as they had forgotten it, the more and more they forgot, the more and more they would have probably sat in their pigsty and thought to themselves, how this isn't so bad. How they would have sat in their pigsty, in their squalor, and probably even started thinking about how not only was it not so bad, but just how great it could be there. What it's like to live in the pigsty. How you can succeed and get ahead in the pigsty. How you can be successful, how you can live life to the fullest in that pigsty. Sometimes we fall in, I think, to that trap. Hard as it may be to believe. Sometimes we think, maybe even, why do we keep on hearing these prayers and these remembrances of what happened before and where we came from every Sunday and every liturgy? And we pray these prayers, and I try to pray as many of them as I can out loud, that reminds us of this past. The Jews were really good at that. They understood that. They gathered together to hear and to remember, not just because it was past history, but because in remembering it, they realized who they were today. And that's our part of our liturgy as well, and yet sometimes we think, and forget that that's who we are, and that's where we came from, and that's also where we are going. The younger son, thanks be to God, didn't get stuck in his squalor in the pigsty. He didn't stay there and try to justify where he was and what he was doing. He didn't stay there and forget where he came from. I love that line in the Gospel where it says he came to, basically, right? Came to his senses. He remembered who he was and whose he was. And in remembering that, he realized how much better it would be to even just be a servant in his father's household. He remembered what he was missing. He remembered what he had left. 
it can be easy when we go, when we move away from somewhere, from our home, right? How many of you live where you grew up? You? Not many of us, right? No, you didn't. You don't. We're, exactly. Uh, uh, none of us, right? Very few. You do, right? So very few people today do, right? Uh, I, I, I certainly don't live where I grew up. I'm closer now than I have been the rest of my life. But, um, you know, it becomes easier the longer we are away from where we grew up or where we lived growing up, right? Or where we lived at any time to forget where it was that we came from. Sometimes that means we... Um, we romanticize where we came from in the past, right? We think how oh, much better it was there, right? Sometimes we don't. We do the opposite. And we forget how wonderful it really was. And we justify and we think to ourselves how wonderful it is now that we have left. Sometimes it's a physical journey that we take. Sometimes it's an emotional journey or other journeys that we take in our lives. As we leave ourselves uh, and we go to a new far off country. The younger son although he went to a far off country, didn't forget, eventually, where he came from. He didn't forget the love that his father had, not only for his children, but even for his servants. This Lenten journey that we're about to take is one where hopefully we, like the prodigal son, will remember where we come from. We'll remember our Father's house. We'll remember the love and the compassion that He has for us, that we too might return. Last Sunday I said how we kind of need to be like the Pharisee in that story at times. Not as he prayed his prayer of justification, self-justification, but as he fasted and as he prayed and as he tithed. This morning, I want us to think about how we need to be like that prodigal son. Not in his walk away from his father, but in his remembrance, in his coming to, in his coming to his senses, and realizing what he had left and what he had lost. Because in realizing that, he got out of the pig pen. He left that pigsty and he walked back home, not expecting to be received as a son, recognizing his unworthiness, hoping to only be received as a servant. And yet, in that return, in that journey home, in that walk of repentance, the younger son was received with open arms by his loving and compassionate father. His father, who amazingly hadn't been sitting, or hadn't gone back to work every day and forgotten about his son, but his father, who was watching for him every day, that that day that he walked down that road back home, his father might see him and run out to meet him and rejoice, knowing that his son, who had been lost, was found, his son who had died to him was alive. Let us also be alive in Christ, that we might journey home to the Father and that we might live with him in his kingdom now, here. For his kingdom is indeed at hand. It is for us to rejoice and to feast with him there, that we might glorify him, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit under the ages of ages. Amen.